Hello my dear children namaste and welcome to yet another session of our terminology series for ICSE class 10 biology this is ambika your biology master teacher right here on this amazing platform which is vidantu 9th and 10th english well guys we all know that uh, biology is full of terms i'm just reminding you why exactly we started this series it's basically to help you recall all the important terms or um slightly seemingly complex terms um, to make your biology learning much easier when it comes to your exams so yes today we are here with the set of with a set of terms from the chapter absorption by roots for icse class 10 as i told you okay but uh, we never start without a positive quote right so here it is there is no elevator to success you always have to take this test yes no shortcuts because i know there are a lot of children not just children adults also especially in today's fast moving world we all want a quick formula a quick mantra for everything a quick um, capsule you know a success capsule or something in a very very quick instant form if at all something like that was available in the market i am sure the sales would have gone on like like crazy i mean i i don't know how to imagine that situation but thankfully we are not in that sort of a crazy level world as yet hopefully we are not anywhere close to it because you know the 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 taste of success the fruits of success also taste much sweeter when you achieve them through real hard work and passion okay so yes let's choose to take the stairs even if by chance there may also be quick illegal ways of achieving it okay right so that's about it and let us move ahead the first term here okay so absorption by roots let me remind you it's uh, one of the chapters from the plant physiology unit um, now osmosis is a very important term in plant physiology as a whole now this is a process by which solvent molecules usually it's water um tend to pass through a semi permeable membrane from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution so as you can see in this particular image the number of solute molecules on this side are very few compared to the number of solute molecules on this side rather solvent molecules are greater over here and lesser over here so solvent molecules move from wherever they are in higher concentration to wherever they are in lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane solute particles usually cannot pass through a semi permeable membrane okay so yes remember children one very very important basic rule i've told you this so many times even before but let me remind you whenever you come across a question uh, related to osmosis or tonicity or anything like that um you might come across terms like more concentrated solution less concentrated solution and all of those remember this simple rule when the term just says the solution is concentrated right it means there is a lot of solute concentration in it if at all somebody has to specify that there is a lot of water in a particular solution they have to say a lot of water concentration or a lot of solvent concentration just concentration would mean solute concentration keep this in mind and this is very 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 important to avoid a lot of confusion for you okay yes so this is what happens in osmosis now absorption what exactly is absorption absorbing something absorbing knowledge is also something that we say the process of action uh, by which one thing absorbs or is absorbed by another taken in by something else in plants of course this happens quite a lot in living systems absorption is very very important plants are no exception to this okay water absorption nutrient absorption all of this happens in plant bodies okay next one cell sap okay what exactly is cell sap cell sap is basically simply put the solution that fills the vacuoles of plant cells now we know that um inside a plant cell vacuoles are normally really large as compared to animal cells vacuoles inside plant cells are really large right because they store a lot of cell sap it's not just water it's a solution it consists of water 
It consists of sugars, amino acids and even waste substances. It may also contain mineral salts. All of this solution together fills up the vacuole and forms what we call the cell sap. It gives a lot of turgidity and uh, structure to the plant cell. So it's very important as well. Okay, right. Now, imbibition. What is this? How is imbibition different from absorption is possibly a one question that many children have in mind. So imbibition is a um, type of diffusion, a kind of diffusion wherein water is absorbed by solid colloids. Okay, um, and this causes an increase in volume. So what exactly happens is the best example would be um, probably imbibition of rainwater, right? Imbibition of rainwater or water in general by wood, wooden doors or wood in general. It just imbibes it and it swells up. As a result, you might notice that during the monsoon season, wooden doors and windows might be a little jammed because they've expanded as a result of imbibing that rainwater. Normally, it is um, dead cells which imbibe, which we use the word imbibition for. Dry seeds or uh, dried plant cells and things like that are what we say imbibe something and swell up. Look at that. That's also an example for imbibition. Water is absorbed or imbibed rather by dried seeds and they swell up. Okay, right. Next, diffusion. Diffusion is much easier, of course, to understand. Diffusion is the net movement of anything, anything at all from a region of its higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration. There is no semi-permeable membrane that we use in diffusion. That is applicable only in osmosis. So this can be anything ranging from gas diffusion um, to even um, a drop of ink diffusing across an entire beaker of water until it's evenly um, colored and so on. Okay, next, active transport. All right. Now, active transport is the movement of ions or molecules across a cell membrane, across a medium, uh, sorry, across a barrier which in the case of living beings, in the case of living systems, we say it is the cell membrane. So across cell membranes, molecules or ions move. So how do they move? They move from a region of lower concentration into a region of higher concentration. Since this doesn't naturally occur, uh, from higher concentration to a region of lower concentration easily occurs. You don't have to apply any external force for it. But sometimes in living systems, from lower concentration to higher concentration, things can pass on and get transported. So for this to happen, because it is occurring against the concentration gradient, against the concentration gradient, since it happens this way, it needs, needs, what does it need? Energy, yes? That is why we call it active transport, active, something that needs a lot of energy, active transport, okay? Yes. Now, next one, turgidity. Turgidity is uh, the term that we use to describe a state of a cell wherein it is uh, swollen or um, really, really rigid or turgid. Normally, in a plant cell, this occurs due to high fluid content inside. As I told you, a lot of cell sap and all of that lots of gives a lot of structure to the plant cell. As a result, it can appear turgid. So by osmosis, by endosmosis, when water enters inside a cell, it can end up becoming turgid. By exosmosis, when water is lost by a plant cell, it can end up becoming flaccid or shrunken up. Okay? Right. Now comes flaccidity. Yes, I told you about turgidity. Flaccidity would be closely related. It would be the opposite, wherein plant tissues would be less rigid than normal. It's not like they have completely shrunken up and become dehydrated, but it is definitely something where it's lost a lot of water compared to the turgid state. Okay, so a flaccid cell is a cell wherein water has been lost from the cell vacuole, as a result, it shrinks up, cell loses its real, complete, full shape. This is a flaccid cell. Okay. Hydrophilic. What does this remind you of? Remember, children, in science, anywhere you come across the suffix philic, 
it means liking or something that likes or loves um, the opposite of philic would be phobic okay phobic would mean fear of something or not liking something hydrophilic would mean liking for water having a tendency to mix with or dissolve in or be wetted by water that's all that it means hydrophilic okay now endosmosis endo means inward many children are confused between these two terms endosmosis and exosmosis just remember endo would mean inward inward and exo would mean outward that's it right but inward and outward with respect to what is the main question inward which means into the cell we are talking about all these phenomena with respect to a plant cell in plant physiology so with respect to a plant cell when water enters inside the cell we describe it as endosmosis okay and exos of osmosis would be the movement of water outside the plant cell when you place it in a when you place it in a concentrated or a hypertonic solution because that's the only state wherein water tends to get lost from a cell right from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution that is exosmosis water getting lost from a cell so cell becomes flaccid as a result now comes tonicity what exactly is this the ability of an extracellular solution to make water move into or out of a cell by osmosis this is what we mean by tonicity so um, these are the three major conditions that we need to be familiar with related to the word tonicity for example hypertonic remember children in this chapter in this unit rather almost every major term um, that we come across is with respect to a plant cells perspective so when i say a hypertonic solution i mean a highly concentrated solution hypertonic would be highly highly concentrated highly concentrated with respect to a cell with respect to a living cell which could either be a plant cell or an animal cell in this example which you see here it's the animal rbcs which are shown right so um, in a plant cell situation would be a little different um, in the sense they have a cell wall that's the only difference so the way the overall shape of the cell would change would be different from that of animal cells but gaining or losing water the principle remains exactly the same in the case of um, an animal cell a set of uh, rbcs when you place them in really high concentrated solutions like a hypertonic solution what happens is obviously these cells end up losing water because from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution water gets lost leading to shrinkage of these cells right now when you place it in isotonic concentrations what happens iso would mean equal concentration so the concentration of the liquid is same within the cell as the solution outside the cell so no net movement occurs what is lost is also gained if at all right next is hypotonic hypo would stand for less low concentration hypo low concentration when i say cells are placed in a hypotonic solution what would that mean the concentration of the solution outside the cell is lower than that inside the cell as a result what happens it's basically a dilute solution we are placing the cells in water enters into the cells by endosmosis right so hypotonic would mean a dilute solution and hypertonic would mean highly concentrated solution that's it okay right now coming to the concept of semi permeable membrane i've told you this in the case of osmosis which is a type of uh, membrane which allows certain molecules or ions to pass through at the time of osmosis normally these certain molecules would be fluid molecules or solvent molecules okay right next one osmotic pressure okay the pressure that has to be applied to a solution in order to stop the flow of solvent molecules through a semi permeable membrane 
that is what we mean by osmotic pressure so imagine uh, that in this case in this setup a um, remember this is the semi permeable membrane do you see that the semi permeable membrane is right here it separates a um, one side of pure solvent and on the other side it's a solution mixed with solutes solvent mixed with solutes so under normal conditions pure solvent would move across the semi permeable membrane into the concentrated solution this is how osmosis naturally occurs right and as a result um, the height of the fluid on this side would gradually come up right because from here it's reducing and flowing towards this side right so here it's lowering and here it's coming up finally when it reaches a certain point what happens is this extra column this extra uh, column of the fluid which has uh, you know added to this increased height on this side of the membrane creates what we call osmotic pressure it creates a sort of pressure such that it prevents any further movement of pure solvent any further movement is prevented that pressure which stops any further movement into this side that is what we call osmotic pressure okay right so next is all right high, uh, isotonic i've told you what this is but it's just mentioned here for you to know uh, hyper would be highly concentrated iso would be where um, concentration is the same iso similar hypo would be dilute okay so hypotonic would be dilute right okay hyper is of course obviously hyper high concentration increased concentration with respect to the cell okay turgor pressure what exactly would this be turgor pressure and wall pressure yes quite often asked in section b of icse papers right turgor pressure is the force within a cell that pushes the plasma membrane against the cell wall from inside to the outside this is what we call turgor pressure we also call it hydrostatic pressure okay turgor pressure from inside to the outside the force exerted as a result of the turgidity that's why we call it turgor pressure then comes wall pressure as you can see turgor pressure is getting exerted from the inside to the outside but wall pressure is the pressure which is exerted by the cell wall on the inner contents of the cell so basically turgor pressure and wall pressure would be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction okay talking about it in physics terms okay now taking a very quick break children let me tell you something that is super important for you all you whether you are in grade 9 now going to 10th icse or 10th icse going to class 11 you have amazing options to choose from um, through vedantu's courses so those of you who are going from 9th to 10th uh, this year appearing for board exams uh, 2022 there, are, there is a lot uh, that I will be uh, telling you about right now. For those of you who are going from 10th grade to 11th grade, time to pick your future course right now. At least make some kind of a decision so that you can direct yourself in the right way, towards the right path. So lots of JEE and NEET based courses targeting two years from now, 2023 um, NEET and JEE and a lot of other such courses are also available right now at Vedantu so that those are going to be really, really relevant to you all at very, very affordable prices. All right, children. So check out um, everything on the Vedantu website. You will get to know more about it. Now, those of you who wish to understand more about what I have to tell you right now, come along with me. Unlimited life classes with fun and high level quizzes. And children, you can compete with students across the world. And that makes you a much more confident student. That's all that matters, right? You get to know your strengths. You get to know your weaknesses. So basically, you get to um, work according to what you have to be doing. Right, children? Yes. Now, just in case you miss out any session while it's happening live, interactive replays are going to be available to you with live quizzes and leaderboards. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, of course it is. And children, premium handwritten notes of your master teachers will be available for you for download so that 
your note making process is going to be a lot more easier than you ever thought it's going to be and that's not it in class doubt solving quality tests and assignments are also going to be a part of this and of course free 5000 plus micro courses and crash courses that you can choose from free in the sense those of you who are subscribed to vedantu pro don't have to pay anything extra for this right less is more so what does this mean yes children this is what it is click on the link in the description box below and remember the coupon code ambpro okay just in case you have to apply the coupon code remember it's ambpro all right yes now for those of you targeting 2021 exams this is the plan for those of you who need a one month subscription the normal pro price is 1500 on application of the coupon code ambpro it reduces to 1200 that's it okay this is for the one month uh, subscription and that would mean the per class price or the per session price comes down to as low as rupees six per session and that is of course cheaper than your favorite lace packet right even a regular lace packet wow yes for those of you who are targeting the next academic year as i told you ninth going to tenth here it is pro price is 3300 without any discounts for the one month subscription and application of the code ambpro or just click on the link in the description box below and you will be taken to a window where you just need to pay 2640 isn't that wonderful yes so uh, for the one full year subscription it's of course here 38880 and on application of the coupon code after discounts, it gets reduced for one full year to 31,104. But that's just there for your information, just in case you want to take it slow and steady. You just need to, um, you just need to experiment um, with online classes and see how it works for you. Definitely the one month option is here. That's exactly why we are giving you that opportunity as well. Right, children? So um, that would bring down your per class price to 13.2 per session for the one month subscription for the longer term subscription it's going to be slightly less but as you can see not too much of difference but anyway that's going to have slightly more benefits but that's completely up to you um, and remember this is going to be even lesser priced than your favorite snack packets kurkure solid masti masala is what is mentioned here but anyway children let me just show you uh, what exactly your student platform would look like okay this is very interesting many of our children love to see this children yes do you see that do you see this now this is of course my teacher platform but for you when you are a student you will get to see something very very similar to this the past sessions which have happened the future sessions which are yet to happen upcoming sessions if it's a past session the, the actual date on which it happened do you see that the actual date on which it happened the time at which it happened the replay button is right here in case you want to watch it once again or you just missed that session and you want to watch it right now get notes button is here so that you can click on it and download the notes yes it's that transparent everything is mentioned here right children okay so i think i have given you all the information from my side now it's your responsibility okay right so let us come back i think we've had a good break let us come back into absorption by roots here we go okay plasmolysis what exactly is it it's a process whereby cells lose water in a hypertonic solution remember remember i told you for a plant cell and for an animal cell when you place them in concentrated solutions the response is going to be a little different because animal cells don't have a cell wall plant cells have a cell wall this is one very very important concept you need to know because for picture based questions in section b possibly this could come up okay as in something like uh, the, the image would be given to you you might have to identify whether it's a plant cell or an animal cell you might have to give a reason to justify your answer if it's a rigid rectangular structure normally it would be a plant cell and this one especially 
gives you that impression very very clearly right because plasmolysis has happened all the water gets lost by exosmosis because the plant cell was placed in a highly concentrated solution but because of the cell wall the overall shape of the plant cell doesn't change but um, from the inside as in from the cell membrane to the rest of the inside of the plant cell everything just shrinks away towards the inside away from the cell wall this is what we call plasmolysis deplasmolysis would be exactly the opposite wherein you place that cell a plasmalized cell in a dilute solution net flow of water into the cell can occur getting it back into the normal condition this is deplasmolysis a plasmalized cell gaining back its normalcy okay root pressure now root pressure is basically a force which is generated in the roots pressure or force generated in the roots just as the name indicates but how does it get generated um, and how does it help this pressure is very important because it helps in um, driving or triggering the movement of fluids and ions from the soil in the upward direction into the plant body root pressure pushes it pushes the movement of fluids and ions from the soil to the upper parts of the plant body all right yes that's root pressure now what is bleeding loss of water through a cut stem this is what we call bleeding of course in the case of animals sorry in the case of animals we call it what do we call it we just call it bleeding because there is loss of blood but in the case of plant cells there is no loss of blood um, but we use the term bleeding because it occurs through an injured part of the plant body normally okay right then comes guttation the beautiful glassy bead like droplets which you see here the water droplets which get exuded or which get pushed out of the plant body um basically it is a xylem sap which gets exuded and um, can be seen beautifully uh, appearing on the edges of leaves normally during early mornings that too usually in herbaceous plants uh, in shorter plants wherein uh, they are in a condition where transpiration is not normally occurring so usually you see this early in the mornings because during the night whatever exists water the plant has accumulated in its body transpiration couldn't happen at night right uh, because stomata remain closed typically so as a result as a mechanism of pushing out the excess water these plants use an alternate mechanism which is guttation so this occurs through openings called hydatodes through openings called hydatodes and transpiration happens through stomata lenticels and cuticles now girdling remember the girdling experiment yes this is what girdling is um it's the process by which you cut a stem not like completely cutting a stem but rather you are penetrating the knife or the blade deep enough to only penetrate the outer phloem and the cambium not the xylem normally typically there would be the xylem there would be the cambium and there would be the phloem this is how the vascular tissues would typically be arranged so um imagine this to be found this way in a rounded stem inside xylem like a ring and concentrated ring with phloem surrounding it there is also the cambial ring in between them so you are basically penetrating the blade or the knife just so deep as to penetrate only the phloem and the cambium and not so deep into the xylem this is what we call the girdling experiment or the process of girdling okay right capillary force what would that be the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces now these tiny tubular structures which you see here which are shown here are what we call capillary tubes capillary tubes right naturally occurring capillary capillary tubes are what you see here um, there are also artificial capillary tubes which we use in the laboratory but in a plant natural capillary tubes do exist within the plant body right it's through those capillary tubes that water column flows and gets maintained so this is what it is flowing of liquids in narrow spaces without the assistance of any external agent any external force it's even moving against gravity 
This is how root pressure is triggering the push up of uh, water in solutes and capillary force is just able to maintain it across the plant body. But adding to that, there are also forces like cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is where similar molecules stick to each other. Water molecules stick to each other. For example, if you put a drop of water here, put another drop of water very, very close to it. You can just use your fingertips and do this simple uh, experiment on, on any smooth surface. Okay, Just put a drop of water like this. Take another drop of water, place it very close to it. They easily get attracted to each other. They merge to form one single droplet of water. This is called cohesion, wherein water drops stick to each other. Adhesion is rather the process by which water drops stick to other substances like the, the xylem walls, for example. So cohesion, adhesion, capillary forces, root pressure all together help in maintaining that column of water in a plant body. Very important. Transpirational pull also adds to it from the top. Okay. Yes. So this is adhesion and the previous one was cohesion. So yes, these are the major terms we've discussed. Um, I guess the major ones are mentioned here. Some of them have probably been missed out over here. Um, a few like um, hypertonic, hypotonic, adhesion. I'll just add those here. Adhesion, cohesion and um, capillary force and all of those capillary pressure. Root pressure is mentioned here and everything else. Transpiration, absorption, cohesion, cell sap, plasmolysis, deplasmolysis, transportation, exosmosis, even endosmosis, turgidity, flaccidity, semi permeable membrane, isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic, guttation, bleeding, imbibition, wall pressure, turgor pressure, root pressure, adhesion, cohesion. That's about it. Very simple, right? Okay, so children, remember. The link is given in the description box below where you can click and directly take you to a whole new world of online learning and click on the like button if you have enjoyed this video and uh, please do remember to share it with all your ICSC class 10 friends because I want as many children as possible to benefit from what we have to offer you here and stay subscribed to this channel children because we will be doing a lot more interesting things in the days and weeks to come. And until we meet again, take care, stay happy and stay healthy. This is Ambika signing off. Bye-bye.